Howdy folks. So you're looking at uh, some of my network gear. Um, this is all stuff I've shown in, in previous videos. It's just uh, been moved around now that I've, uh, I've changed houses. But anyway, we've got my router back here, which runs PFSense. And uh, I had a problem with this uh, last weekend. Uh, I was doing some work and I heard a, uh, the internet cut out and then I, I heard a, a beep come from the, the PC speaker in this machine. And as it turns out, uh, it actually crashed and uh, restarted, and uh, the the crash dump basically showed that there was uh, some sort of buffer collision between a socket buffer and an M buffer in the network driver, which I thought was incredibly odd. I mean, I've been running PFSense for so long and I've never had a problem. I kind of just marked that down as a fluke and just sort of went on with it. And this weekend, so seven days later, pretty much exactly, I was doing some work and the internet cut out again. And so I came in here and it wasn't, wasn't rebooting or anything, but I couldn't access it. So I got out a, a monitor and I plugged it in and the thing actually hit a kernel trap and just basically it's a kernel panic um, and it just stopped and I had to actually physically reset the box. So two hardware, like kernel level failures uh, within a week. Um, on a system that has otherwise been perfectly stable um, for over a year without any problems. That's, you know, something, something smells fishy. So I sort of went with my gut instinct and said, there's something wrong with the power supply. So I went out and just, I, I, needed, I needed more power supplies anyway. So even if I went out and bought a power supply and it didn't turn out to be the power supply, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I needed it anyway. So I just went out and got it rather than, you know, dicking around for a while and, you know, then the store closing because it was a Sunday. So I went out and they, the local computer store that I buy all my stuff from, they stopped carrying Seasonic power supplies, which is kind of unfortunate. And uh, they, they had one left in stock and it was this, um, this power supply. I've, I've, I've shown this in, a, in another video. This is a, a Seasonic uh, an SS300 TGW. It's a TFX, the 300 watt 80 plus gold supply. It's a server supply. And you can see I've uh, sort of uh, I want to say ghetto mounted, but I mean this thing actually fits surprisingly well in an ATX case. And uh, so I just bought this because it was the last one they had. It's the last one they're ever going to carry. So I thought I might as well snatch it up, you know, while I can. And um, so I got it home. I tested it. I just I just swapped out the power supply. I didn't even think twice about it. And uh, as it turns out, that yes, it was indeed the power supply because uh, I actually tested the one that was in here. On my on the bench, and it's doing some very funky things, and uh, so yeah, this this first of all shows the TFX supplies are uh, fully electrically compatible with ATX, uh, so you can put a TFX supply in an ATX system no problem, and um, you know the holes don't line up, but in this case they 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 actually worked out really well, and and I, I'm gonna block that hole. I don't like the hole. It it you know it allowed dust to get in and. Possibly it doesn't make the cooling as efficient. Of course, that case fan is not just going to be sucking through the hole and blowing right out. So I'm definitely going to find some, some cardboard or maybe a little piece of wood or something and block that off. But other than that, it, it works perfectly fine in this application. So I want to show you the, uh, the power supply that I pulled out and uh, see if I can get it to act up on camera. So this is the power supply that I pulled out of that machine. Uh, it's a Corsair CX430 version 2. And uh, this thing has actually fared surprisingly well for the, uh, the apparent build quality in this. Um, it's made by Channel Well Technology as far as I can tell. Um, it's, the layout is not bad. Um, the component choices that they've made are not the best. Um, but I think, I think it, it fared surprisingly well, I think. Uh, I, I knew this power supply was going to be a problem. It was one of those things that, you know, it's, it's not up to the sort of quality standards of the rest of the supplies that I have in service. Um, I just had this for a while and it's one of those things that, you know, I didn't want to bother to take my router down and, you know, replace a new one. It's just something I just kept putting off and putting off. And that's why as sort of as soon as the router started acting up, I sort of thought it's got to be the power supply. You know, it's just, it's come back to bite me in the ass. And, you know, <laughs> it, it, that's exactly what it was. Um, if you ever have a system and it really has all sorts of strange, erratic, um, usually kernel level problems um, that you just you can't figure out and they don't seem to be related to each other, 
I would very you should you should definitely look into the power supply um, because all it takes is a little drop in the the, the uh, load regulation of a power supply, and you can you can brown out a component, you can flip some bits, you can cause all sorts of weird stuff to happen, memory corruption, and you'll just never be able to trace it back to the original fault. Um, it's just it's very hard. Um, if you have a system that has sensors on it, a lot of computers, a lot of motherboards have sensors um, that over like I2C or, I, or SPI or whatever, they will actually uh, measure power supply voltages, fan speeds, all those things, kinds of things. And they'll report them if you have a driver for it. Uh, like if you're on Linux, you can install LM sensors, run sensors detect, and then load the module and then just run sensors and it'll dump all the sensors you have access to. And uh, you know, I've had systems where I literally just put that in a loop every X seconds, I'll just read the sensor value and I'll run it overnight or whatever. And then you can watch and see if the power supply does weird things. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're not lucky enough to have those, um, you know, a multimeter is useful. Um, find like a Molex connector or something and shove your meter probes in it and just, you know, load the system down, load it and unload it and just watch the meter and see if it, uh, if it changes and goes out of spec. Um, that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for if it, you know, moves around wildly. I mean, it should be a relatively stable voltage. And of course, you don't want it to drop below uh, the ATX spec, which I believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's... Um, 5% tolerance, so you can go uh, plus or minus 5% of the rated value um, for each of the rails. So anyway, what, what I did to test this uh, was I just used these power resistors, which I've shown in another video. They're 8 ohms, 100 watts each. Um, so if you put them on the, the, the 5 or the 12 volt rail, you can generate a couple amps worth of current. Of course, it's nowhere near the power uh, that the, the, this thing normally would um, the load this thing would normally have in operation, but it's enough that it'll overcome the minimum load of the power supply. Because of course you can't just run these things unloaded. Um, they do have to have some current on them to be uh, stable. Uh, so it's not fair to just plug a meter directly into the leads without any load on it. Um, you may get erratic behavior and that may be normal. Um, you have to put some load on it. And uh, this kind of load, it should be perfectly stable and it's not. And it's also out of tolerance on some of the rails, which is, again, not good with a, such a low load like this. And I can actually uh, basically plug one in and unplug another. And you can actually watch the voltage change drastically by just, you know, changing a, a slight load. So it's load, it's, 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 um, load regulation is pretty much crap. And uh, that's why I'm pretty much 100% certain this is what's causing all the problems. So let me, uh, let me pop this thing open and we can take a look at uh, the inside. And uh, I'll just kind of show you the build quality of it. So this is inside the unit. Um, as you can see, it's uh, definitely used by the amount of dust that's in here. I try to clean this thing with compressed air, but you can only get so far into these things without taking them apart, and I never really bothered to do that. It's just a, uh, I think it's a Yate Loon fan, which uh, it, it makes, it, it doesn't sound perfectly healthy, but it still spins fine. So, you know, I guess, uh, I guess it could have done worse on the fan. Um, all the caps in this thing are made by Samson, which is definitely, in my opinion, one of the worst brands. Um, they're they're like maybe like third or fourth from the bottom. Um, the bottom being things that don't even have brands on them at all. Um, so the caps are most certainly what's wrong with this, uh, because of course it doesn't have a catastrophic failure. It's probably the caps on the output. Uh, they've probably gone high ESR. Their their capacitance has probably dropped, um, and that's what's causing all the the uh, load regulation problems. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of weird on this power supply is the way that they do the filter cap here. Um, this is the line filter. It goes between live and neutral. And uh, you can see they've just, they've just uh, shrink wrapped it and it's just attached directly to the plug. And it's just kind of flapping around here. And uh, it's, a I mean, it's a pretty heavy part. Um, so I just, I mean, it, it seems okay, but I, I, just, I don't like the design of this. The leads are really long and... Yeah, I don't know. That that just it doesn't look like great design to me. I know it's I know it's fine. I mean, they've designed it such that it can't really cause a problem, but I it just it looks kind of like a like an afterthought, but I mean, it's low cost power supply, so what can you really expect? I mean, it has a switch in it. They've heat shrunk things. It's got grounding in it, which is nice. Um, you know, we've got fusible resistor, we've got common mode choke and input filter. Um, bridge rectifier, which they've mounted off the board probably for heat sinking because it doesn't have its own heat sink. And then we've probably got our input rectifier, 
tank cap. That looks like probably a choke. We've got probably like a PFC correction board. Uh, this heat sink here is probably our main uh, our main switching trans, uh, transistors. We've got our main primary transformer and our um, secondary um, standby supply transformer. Output rectification, regulation uh, on this heat sink. So this guy is going to get real hot because it's got stuff on both sides. You can see it's actually got a thermal um, uh, temperature sensor here. There's a thermal cutout. So if this, this heat sink gets too hot, it shuts down. Uh, it's actually the only heat sink that has a thermal cutout on it, so I guess that makes sense. And then it's just output uh, regulation all in here with all the caps and stuff, at least the fan unplugs, so I guess you could uh, you know, service that at least. Uh, but of course it doesn't have removable cables or anything like that. Theoretically I could probably replace all the caps and it would probably be fine again. Whether I want to do that or not is a whole other story. I don't really care that much. I'll probably keep this thing around and if in an emergency I need something, I need to do something, then sure. but. I probably won't fix this because I don't think it's worth the effort. I'd rather just you know, spend 80 bucks and just buy a new power supply from a company that's reputable and you know it's got brand name caps in it, maybe even solid polymer caps like the supply I put in there, um, which I expect to last far longer than this. So anyway, I'm just gonna fire this thing up and see if, uh, it's it'll be cold so it might not do it, but I wanna see if I can get it to uh, show, I, get, I wonder if I can show you what it was doing uh, when I tested it the other day. Okay, so basically I've just got two 8 ohm loads. Uh, they're connected in parallel to the 12 volt supply. Or actually no, they're connected to the 5 volt supply. I guess we'll test the 5 volt first. It looks really janky, it is really janky, but it's a test setup, so who really cares? So um, let's turn it on, and then I'm just gonna use my tweezers to turn the supply on because uh, I don't really know how else to do this with one hand. Gotta get the right pins here. I can never remember which ones it is. So I'll fire it up. And uh, we can see uh, that we're sitting at 4.68 volts. That's actually a lot higher than it was yesterday. Uh, I was sitting at about 4.5 volts uh, yesterday. Now, if it's 5% tolerance, it shouldn't go below uh, 4.75 volts. Um, so just with a, a simple load like this, um, it's it's uh, it's out of tolerance just automatically. Um, so I mean, it fails automatically. I, I don't. I shouldn't even have to test it any further. It's it's uh, it's failed. Now, this was jumping around. Uh, that was the other thing. Um, it was it was sort of you'd, you'd watch it fluctuate. And of course, it shouldn't fluctuate because these are DC loads. Um, they're 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 about as perfect a load as you can get. So it's you know. It did not have the, the kind of uh, load regulation I was expecting. Now the other thing is I've got this thing on a variac and I can actually, uh, I'm actually adjusting uh, the line voltage uh, into the thing and it seems to do line regulation okay but not load regulation. And actually my, one of my theories as to maybe why this thing is starting to exhibit its failure symptoms now is possibly because it's getting colder um, and that could be you know, temperature could play a factor, and also the fact that um, I use electric to my, all my heating in my house is electric. So as it gets colder, um, the line voltage drops because all the extra load on the the mains will actually drop it. I think we're sitting at like 113 volts uh, RMS when it's supposed to be 120. So as the line voltage goes down, this thing um, it might change the characteristics of the supply. I mean, it shouldn't because that's on the primary side. Uh, of the SMPS, but who knows? Um, I don't know. It seems to do line regulation fine, so maybe that's not it, but that was my initial theory anyway. Let me switch this to um, to 12 volts and see if uh, see if that's acting up. Now I know this looks ghetto, but uh, just a, a pro tip, if you ever need to connect something to a power supply uh, and you're in a rush, um, the floppy disk power connector, the, the holes in that connector are the exact same diameter as a regular uh, paper clip. So you can actually just use a paper clip or two paper clips and you can just clip stuff to that. And as long as they don't swing around and touch each other, um, you can draw a pretty decent amount of current out of that connector. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the way I connect most of my stuff to my power supplies. So I've got it connected for 12 volts and we'll just power it up and we'll see what we get. 11.56 so 5% on the 12 volt rail 
uh, is 11.4 volts. So um, it's currently actually doing a bit better now uh, than it was before. So maybe, maybe I would assume that it's probably when this thing gets hot that uh, you start to see sort all sorts of weird stuff because those capacitors are gonna uh, probably behave differently at higher temperatures. And uh, with the system it's in, of course, the power supply's at the top, all the heat rises up. And uh, so, it, it, I mean, the exhaust that came out of this thing was pretty hot when it was in operation. So um, wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if it does misbehave only when it's warm. And I'm not gonna bother to try and run this thing forever to try and get it to get it to do what it was doing before. Hopefully you'll, you'll believe me that uh, when I tell you it was, uh, it was jumping all over the place. But yeah, the resistors are, are getting warm. But they, they'll, they can do this all day. Actually, that's one thing I can show you. If I disconnect one resistor, you can see how the, the voltage changes. So I'm switching in just a, a relatively small amount of current. I mean, relative to what the power supply can do, I'm switching in just over an amp. And that's a, a massive difference uh, in voltage for that. Uh, in, in my opinion, that is, that is pretty poor regulation. Uh, power supply should be able to do a lot better than that. Uh, so, anyway, I'm I'm just waffling on at this point. I don't think I'm being constructive anymore. But yeah, so you gotta you gotta suspect power supplies sometimes. Uh, it's just it's just a, a, a fact of of dealing with uh, of dealing with machines on you know commodity hardware like this. Um, it, it's one of the hardest things to track down, and it's one of those things you just kind of have to know what to look for. Um, usually it manifests as strange corruption and, and uh, kernel problems because it is a you know it is caused by hardware problems and the kernel is usually the first thing to to hit those. Um, but if, if you've ever overclocked before and you've ever you know pushed a system too hard and uh, you know all the weird shit that happens when you overclock uh, too far, those kinds of problems are what you get when your power supply is failing. So if you've ever overclocked and, and you know you know the symptoms of that, uh, that's that's uh, you know if you haven't overclocked and you're starting to get that, look at the power supply. Also, just look at how old the power supply is and just sort of you know <laughs> base it on that. But uh, if you have a multimeter, that's the best way is to just find a spare connector, plug it in while the system is running, run it through a bunch of tests, and just watch it. Um, you know, at least at least check the the, the five and the uh, twelve volt rails. Um, the 3.3 volt rail is also another thing uh, that, that you should check, although it's a little harder to do. You've got to come in from the back of the motherboard connector, which you can do. You can just shove it, the, it in beside the cable and it'll work. This thing seems to be totally fucked on 3.3 uh, volts. Like I can put on, I can put these things in series to generate 16 ohms and I can put that on the 3.3 volt rail and it will, uh, it'll actually just overcurrent the power supply which is, is odd because if you actually look at the rating on this thing, um, if you look here at the DC output for 3.3 volts, it's rated for 20 amps and I'm putting in uh, like 400 milliamps or 200 milliamps or whatever and it's, uh, it's dying from that, which does not seem right to me. So yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely a problem with that. Um, so yeah, I, I have, I'm not gonna bother to troubleshoot this. Anyway. Need to stop waffling. So, anyway, hopefully, this was uh, interesting. And as always, thanks for watching.